So I was just thinking we'll do uh, Yasomati Nandana this morning instead of Jai Radha Madhava. Yasomati Nandana Braja Bharanagara Kokura Hanjana Kahanaya Go peeper anandana, Madame Manohara. Call the other moon Hey, Amala Hari Nam, Amiavi Lasaha. Vipin of Purandara, Navinara, God of Bada, Bumsi, Badana, Si, Bahasai. Brajajan of Fallen, Sudakulan, Hasan. Nanda Gora Noraku Govinda Madhava Navanita Taskara Govinda Madhava Navanita Taskara Sundar and Handa go Sundar and Handa go Hey, Jamuna Tata Chad, go give us Jamuna Tata Jara, who he was a no harder. Yes, we are out of Balava, Vindavan and Hatta Pada. Yes, we are out of Balava, Vindavan and Hatta Pada. Baki Vin Hodas Rahayam. Uh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, uh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare 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 Jaya Pancha Tatva Pancha Tatva Pancha Tatva Jaya Pancha Tatva Hey Jaya Gauranita Gauranita Hey Gauranita Jaya Gauranita Mm-hmm. 
Prabhupad, 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 Jai Prabhupad. Dealer Prabhupad ki jai. Hari Nam Sankirtan ki jai. Hmm. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Continue with the chapter on Mohini Murti bewilders Lord Shiva. This is verse 23, going on to a few other verses to 20, uh, 24. Okay, 23 and 24. So, how many brahmacharis we got out there? We got a, this is a brahmachari class. But brahmacharinis can also get involved in it too. Rihasta brahmacharis, yeah, we have a few of those. <laughs> Bachelor daddies too. <laughs> All right, okay, so we'll, str we'll struggle through this one. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Tasya karatka satu kun duku yada Kato viduram tamanu rajat striaha Vasa satu tram laguma harad Bhavasya devasya kilanu pasyataha. Tasya kara grat satu kanduko yada. Kato viduram tam anu rajat striaha. Vasa Sasutram Lagu Maruto Harad Bavasya Devasya Kilanu Pasyataha Tasya Karakat Satu Kandu Koyada Kato viduram tamanu rajat striaha. Vasasatrutram lagumaruto harad. Bavasya devasya kilanu payasyataha.
ladies. <coughs> <laughs> Tasya of the beautiful woman Kara Agrat from the hand Sa that too but Kanduka the ball Yada when Gata had gone Viduram Far off, Tum, that ball, Anuvrajat, began to follow. Striaha, of that woman, Vasa, the covering dress, <coughs> Sa Sutram, with the belt, Lagu, because of being very fine, Maruta, the breeze, Hara, ha harat blew away Bhavasya while Lord Shiva Devasya the chief demigod Kila indeed Anupasyataha was always looking so now the scene is that Krishna has fulfilled the desire of Lord Shiva by transforming himself into the incarnation of Mahamohini Murti, but with an added extra attractive force. <laughs> and now Shiva's observing this form, which is Krishna himself in the form of this beautiful woman. Now this beautiful woman is playing with Lord Shiva. <laughs> and here we go. When the ball leaped from her hand and fell at a distance, the woman began to follow it. But as Lord Shiva observed these activities, a breeze suddenly blew away the fine dress and belt that covered her. Mm -hmm. Verse 24. Thus Lord Shiva saw the woman, every part of whose body was beautiful, fo beautifully formed, and the beautiful woman also looked at him. Therefore, thinking that she was attracted to him, Lord Shiva became very much attracted to her. Now he's already being enchanted. And so he's following whatever gestures and uh, features that she's exhibiting and, and, and uh, showing in different ways. Purport. This is a very short purport. Lord Shiva was observing every part of the woman's body, and she was also glancing at him with restless eyes. Thus Shiva thought that she was also attracted to him, and now he wanted to touch her. Hmm. Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Panchakopa Turubis Chakripa Sindhube Bacha Paditanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namahona Maha Jai Sri Krishna Jaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadar Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. So here, hmm. So we're seeing what's happening with Lord Shiva. Krishna is uh, using his very powerful Shakti and the, the most powerful Shakti within the Material energy is the form of a woman. Mm -hmm. 
it's so powerful that even great conquerors who have conquered many nations are conquered by the beautiful form of a woman. <laughs> Uh, Alexander the Great even made that statement that although I have conquered so many when I'm with my, you know, consort, I'm conquered. <laughs> so we see how powerful the, the material energy is. And the form of a woman is the most powerful form. We even see how even Krishna, um, when he was lifting Govardhan Hill, now, he's the Supreme Personality of God and fully transcendental to everything. But Krishna also has attraction for the female form, but in a transcendental way, not in a lusty way like everybody in the material world does. <laughs> and so when he was, what, was picking up, his eyes diverted to the breast of one of the gopis. <laughs> And um, then the hill started to shake a little bit, and Balaram caught him, and then he be, Krishna became a little embarrassed that he got caught by Balaram looking at the breast of one of the gopis. So uh, sometimes Prabhupada said, even Krishna, he's a lusty boy, but not in the same way we are, because it is pure love that's transformed. So what we see in the material world, the attraction between man and woman, Pumsam Striya Mituni Baba Metan is also the uh, expression or the uh, pattern or reflection of what is there with Krishna in the spiritual world. But here it's full of inebrities. And in order to keep the conditioned soul locked into the material energy, Maya has different ways to do that. And the most powerful and is the form of a woman. As it says that uh, a man's form was made for self-realization and a woman's form is made to divert the attention away from self-realization. That's a statement that has been said many, many times in our classes. So one should not be bewildered by such, but it's not possible not to be bewildered. That's how powerful it is. <laughs> it's so powerful. We see that we so many stalwart yogis. We had Subari Muni. He was simply meditating underwater, and he simply saw two fishes engaged in copulation, and his mind was changed. And he so much so that he now he was chasing after a woman, and he. He had uh, he wound up marrying 50, 50 wives, <laughs> and so there are innumerable examples both within the shastras and within the ISKCON society and within the world in general. As Prabhupada writes in the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam in the first canto, that many stalwart devotees have fallen victim to two things: money and women, although they've climbed very high on the spiritual platform and have almost reached the platform of Prema, which is a very high platform, Baba, still, for some deviation or some, uh, what we say, inattention, a little inattention can also cause one to become so disturbed that they can only think of that Sometimes we see, <clears throat> and there's examples that just a little inattention towards the material energy, one becomes attracted, and in that, in it, all they they only think is how to fulfill that attraction. Hmm. Yeah, I remember one sannyasi I won't mention in our movement. Now he was, you know, he was a preacher, traveler, but then somehow or other, all of a sudden, he changed and. Not all of a sudden, it was a gradual thing, but then he wanted to get married and he said, he told me personally, he said, I got to have it. <laughs> and I said, what? <laughs> he said, and then he explained and I didn't really want to hear the explanation, but <laughs> so 
We see, you know, even those who practice devotional service very strictly for many, many decades sometimes, they're no longer practicing anymore. Or they're practicing in a different way. But that's all right. Grihastha ashram is also a concession for uh, fulfilling one's needs on a bodily platform and at the same time being, a, being properly situated where they can execute devotional service. So it's authorized. But if one can stay free from that attraction, then devotional service becomes easy or easier. But it's like, uh, sex life is like an itch. <laughs> Prabhupada explains it. It's an itch. It's just like if you get an, an itch, say you get a mosquito bite. And sometimes those mosquitoes, they really give you a really, what we say, uncontrollable itch. And you just, just got to scratch it. So you scratch it for a little while, <clears throat> and then the, the itch goes away. But then wait a few minutes, not even a few seconds, and the itch comes back, and it's stronger than it was before. <laughs> So in the same way, this is how the sex life works. Prabhupada compared it to an itch. That if you simply tolerate the itch, and that sometimes that's hard to do, but that's the formula, then one can somehow or other will see the itch starts to decrease in intensity, and eventually it goes away. So sex life is like that. It's simply an itch. Or the desire for sex life is like this strong itch. But one who chants the holy names, just like Srila Prabhupada when he gave sannyas to many of his devotees, he knew, and he also said it, they weren't ready for sannyas. <laughs> but he said if you can somehow control that desire for sex life and stay fixed and chant the holy names of the Lord, you can stay you know, within that ashram and make nice progress. But not all, all of them made it, of course. But this is the strongest force within the material world, is the attraction between male and female. And here it's exhibited in a transcendental way, at least to a certain degree. Krishna wants to kind of let Lord Shiva know that my power is so strong that even you, who are the personification of dira, dira means undisturbed, in any situation. I mean, I mentioned it in the other class, and I'll mention it again. Maybe some people don't like to hear it. But Lord Shiva is so, so dira, so fixed, that uh, his wife was worshiping his genitals, and he was completely absorbed in trance. Not the slightest bit disturbed. Now, who can do that? <laughs> Only Lord Shiva. So we see here, Lord Shiva is, is looking like something else now. <laughs> and there's not even any kind of contact, but still he's bewildered. This is the power of Krishna. Krishna's maya is so strong that it, even Krishna says, uh, even shows in examples that he sometimes becomes bewildered by his own maya. <laughs> he can't be, but... He, sometimes he does, just to give it a little de uh, understanding how powerful that uh, that Maya energy is. Now Maya is one. There is Yoga Maya and there is Maha Maya. There's only one Maya. Mm -hmm. Yoga Maya is that energy that creates a situation where Krishna's leelas can be performed in a, such a way that the activities appear to be ordinary, but they're not. They simply hide and reveal simultaneously Krishna's uh, pastimes as they are displayed in different ways. But she has an expansion, and that is Mahamaya. Mahamaya is that force that bewilders everything in this material world. And Maya is very strong. There was one devotee who's, who said to Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada, he was a sannyasi. He said, Prabhupada, I'm in Maya. And Prabhupada looked at him and said, you're always in Maya. <laughs> it's, 
we sometimes we think we're so Krishna conscious. <laughs> and it's nice sometimes to feel like that. It gives you a little hope. But most of the time we're in Maya. <laughs> Just the way it is. We get a little Krishna consciousness sneaks in once in a while. <laughs> Somehow or other. It, look, it looks good for a while. <laughs> but Maya is so powerful. And to overcome it, just like it says that the living entity in the material world is called Nitya Bada. Nitya means eternal and Bada means conditioned. So how can the living entity who is part and parcel of Krishna, who uh, is pure spiritual, be considered to be eternally conditioned? Well the statement gives a certain element of point, it makes a certain point that we have been so long associated with the material energy that it appears to be eternal. And millions and millions of births in this material world. To come to the human form of life is, not, is very rare. And to come to devotional service is even much rarer than that. So those who can come to that far have actually struggled through various species of life for millions of births. What to speak of how many years that is, it's probably billions of years. And now coming to the human form of life, it's, it's very rare. So then again, now we want to become Krishna conscious. And after being associated with the material energy in a, such a direct way for so many lives, and that conditioning goes very deep. Sometimes it says, well actually it does say, that the more you make advancement in devotional service, the more you realize how conditioned you are. <laughs> this is an interesting statement. Because we don't really know how thick those coverings are. I mean, we get a glimpse, sometimes we get an ecstasy in Krishna consciousness, and that and it fades for after a few moments. <laughs> well, those who are in constant ecstasy, that's a little indication that they're making advancement. But even those in constant ecstasy, sometimes they fall from the, sta fall from the, the standard because of inattention. Inattention, just like we had Bart Maharaj. He will, he became very infatuated and affectionate towards a little deer. He was on the platform of Bhava. I mean, that's a high platform. In other words, he had, he had gone through eight stages of Krishna consciousness, almost on the platform of Prema. But a little, little attention and a misplaced sentiment caused him to get overly attracted in such a way that he completely neglected his spiritual practice and become, became overly affectionate. It was almost like, as Prabhupada writes in one of the purports in that particular Leela, it was almost like a loving relationship between the deer and, uh, and uh, Bart Maharaj. So we see how uh, powerful the material energy is. So therefore, one should never consider themselves Safe. <laughs> that's, that's the formula for disaster. One should always be eager to take shelter of Krishna and his holy name. Because this is one way when one can fall down. Just like sometimes what we do. And this is something I don't like, but it happens in our Krishna consciousness society. Um, the brahmacharis can't talk to the women because ultimately, or can't, you know, communicate in a very regular way. So sometimes what they do is they ask Grihasta to do that on their behalf, because they say, well, Grihasta is married, and therefore he's all right, he can be with a woman. But that's, that's really something that is not so good, because even a Grihasta who associates with another woman outside of his wife is preaching in course in the wrong way we might say but it can lead to that I've also seen that I've seen uh, devotees give up their wife for another lady in Krishna consciousness because they became associated with and attracted to that, to that other lady 
So sometimes we do that in order to keep things moving, we ask the grihastas to do things with the ladies, and that puts them in an awkward position. Now that shouldn't be done. And therefore everything should be done accordingly. That's why we need more women preachers in our movement. And this is where our movement lacks. We want more ladies to take care of the ladies. And that way the men can uh, focus more on their, their responsibilities in Krishna consciousness. I see Panchatattva. And I'm always encouraging my senior God sisters to somehow travel and preach. Of course, it's hard for ladies to travel and preach. Just like we had Lakshmi Moni here for a while, and she was doing tremendous work preaching to the ladies here. It was great. And we have we had other ladies also come and also give their time here. So we need that. <laughs> the ladies also need that, where they can really open up with senior ladies. And it's hard, just like they try to open up with sannyasis or even with the brahmacharis. Or if they don't open up, they remain close. Everyone needs to reveal their mind in Krishna consciousness to others. And we need to do that with senior devotees many times in order to get a clear understanding of how to overcome whatever struggles we're overcoming. And we're all struggling on one side, on one level or another. Now that's required. So I was encouraging the, the senior ladies in our movement who have some understanding of Shastra and can present it to be, be that force where we can give more shelter and protection and guidance to our women in our society, both those who are married and those who are unmarried also. That's necessary. Okay, so this... Uh, and Prabhupada said that this, uh, this attraction between man and woman, Prabhupada said we should discuss this regularly in our classes. Sometimes we don't see it often, only when the verses come up. But Prabhupada said if we don't discuss this attachment between men and women in our classes regularly, he said our movement will grow weak because we internalize these desires rather than discuss them in an open and honest way in, this, in the association of devotee and get a clear understanding of these different principles. So um, to, to hide the subject matter in a corner and make it like it doesn't exist means that it'll only grow into a monster anyway and come out in a different form. <laughs> yeah. now, these things need to be discussed. You know attraction between the sexes is very, very strong, very, very strong. Sometimes just just by thinking, just like um, I was just reading just the other day, a person may think of a woman or just hear her name, and by hearing her name he gets an image of the woman, and then he starts to think about her in that way. And that increases, and sometimes even it increases so much that in, in the time when you take rest, it appears in the dreams. So this is the power of the opposites. And that goes for men too, uh, women too. It's not that only men become attracted to women, women also become attracted to men. This is the, this is the force in the material world. But everyone has to become attracted to Krishna. <laughs> And our attraction for each other can be on the spiritual level, that is, based on the principles of assisting each other in devotional service, and not on the physical level, or on the sensual level, or on the casual level. These things are dangerous and can lead to, what we say, change in one's Krishna consciousness. I was just reading, Shamsundar was, I'm reading his book, Chasing the Rhinos, Part 3. It's interesting. One very senior devotee who was, I mean, he was so fixed in serving Srila Prabhupada. He was Prabhupada's right-hand man doing so much service for so long. And just one day, he came up and said, Shamsundar, I'm giving up my service to Prabhupada. I met this nice Brahmacharini and Haribo, I'm off. <laughs> Uh, but so 
it was a surprise. <laughs> no one really expected it, but something was happening on the side that nobody knew about. <laughs> So, um, we definitely we have to come, become attracted to Krishna. And how we become attracted to Krishna is Shravanam, Kirtanam, Smarnam. Hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. And the deity form of the Lord is there not only for worship, but to help us to develop attraction for Krishna. Therefore, Ikshanam, Ikshanam is a type of worship where you simply sit in front of the deity and meditate on the deity's transcendental form. And then you become, that's a, it's actually a form of worship just by looking at, Prabhupada also talks, he said, even if you can't chant Hare Krishna or something, just sit in front of the deities and just observe the deities and you'll become Krishna conscious. <laughs> As Krishna is in any of his manifestations, we see here especially very, very attractive. That's why his name is Krishna. He attracts everyone at every at all point. So we want to get attracted to Krishna more and more, and that attraction turns into affection. And when affection reaches a certain level, it actually turns into love. And so Krishna is all attracted, <laughs> and he can attract anyone, and we're seeing here how he's tracking Lord Shiva, although Lord Shiva was thinking the demigods didn't get attracted when they saw the Mohini form, and I am the king of the demigods. <laughs> so there's no worry, I'm okay. <laughs> but Krishna wanted to say, all right, we'll give you a little test. <laughs> and so Krishna did that. And then... Uh, You'll see, as this pastime goes on, it's very interesting. But Prabhupada said one should not find or take exception with Lord Shiva's being attracted to Mohini Murti. He is still the powerful Lord Shiva. <laughs> like that. Okay, so sometimes we see you know, even a senior devotee in our movement will get a little bit attracted to someone but then they'll wake up and think, oh, what am I doing? This is not right. And then they'll change. So sometimes that does happen. But that doesn't disqualify them from their position. As long as they, again, come back to the standard. The standard is, you know, that one should remain, uh, one should act according to the etiquette given according to the particular ashram. And for brahmachari, there is no association with women, 100%. For sannyasi, it's the same, but then again, the sannyasis are also gurus, so they have disciples, and disciples come running up and say, Maharaj, only you can save me. And then we think, uh-oh, what's going to happen now? <laughs> so, <laughs> but who's going to save me after I save you? <laughs> or try to save you. So we have this uh, situation, but where to, that's why I was going back to the, that we need more senior ladies in our movement to take the responsibility of taking care of them. And they're the ladies who need that shelter, who need that guidance, who need uh, that, um, whatever they need, they can find that with the senior ladies in our, or they can find it with each other, but not always, that's not always available. Okay, so we'll stop there and see if there's any comments or questions. Yes, uh, Shasho? It's better because we have a recording. Uh, Hare Krishna. Maharaj, I would uh, just ask you about then about Vaishnava etiquette, if you can a little bit talk about it and the importance of it, because I think sometimes Vaishnava etiquette saves us so much problems. Well... Who was it? I think it was Sanatana Goswami or Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said Vaishnava etiquette is the ornament of the devotee. So if someone is dressed very nicely, just like I say a lady is dressed very nicely, but she has some flowers in her hair, they stand out and they become the ornament of her dress. Sometimes you wear, a, maybe a man will wear a flower on his lapel who's dressed in a suit. 
that becomes easily noticeable. So the etiquette of a Vaishnava is the uh, the standard by which this Vaishnava does everything. <laughs> And that's mentioned in our scriptures. Bhakti Charu Maharaj was the epitome of teaching Vaishnava etiquette. And uh, he wrote, he wrote, and he also spoke on it very much, very often. And we have some written material on Vaishnava etiquette. So it's, and it's, uh, you know, Sanatana Goswami glorifies Srila Haridas Thakur as being the best in Vaishnava etiquette and at the same time the best in preaching. Sometimes it says that one who is preaching, his etiquette is not so good, because sometimes doing, because of preaching, one gets a little, I don't know, outside of the etiquette for the sake of preaching. Uh, and other times there will be those devotees who, who won't do the preaching because they're afraid of the getting outside of the etiquette. That's another type of devotee. But then again, one should uh, try to follow the etiquette as best as possible. And the best thing to do is always take, always take association with other senior devotees. Because if you get a little outside of your etiquette by associating with senior devotees, you can easily find the means to correct yourself or be corrected by such association. It's important that we have that association. So yeah, Vaishnava etiquette is the ornament of a devotee. There's, an, there's three verses where Sanatana Goswami uh, speaks these. It's in the, in, 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 in the beginning of Antya Leela, in Chaitanya Chari Tamrita. Anything else? Everyone's afraid to talk about this subject. But if you're afraid to talk about it, that's a problem. <laughs> Nobody wants to discuss this. Okay, you should really get into it. Okay. The attraction between men and women. Hare Krishna Maharaj. A point that is interesting for me is uh, how to be more... Uh, when I was Brahmachari and when I was completely in celibacy, I was uh, narrow-minded, if you can say like this. No, just yeah. uh, my view was kind of narrow and uh, my heart was kind of tough. <laughs> I didn't have tolerance so much. I didn't think about uh, uh, other feelings and so on. How we can be normal and be in celibacy completely? You know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think all brahmacharis in the beginning go through that. But aversion is not the solution for attraction. But in the beginning, a little aversion is good to help one fo focus on the essence. But if you remain in that, that aversion, then you don't come to Krishna consciousness because Krishna consciousness means to see everything in relationship to Krishna and to understand that that yes, there's things that we want to avoid, but we understand that this is also part of Krishna's energy. We just avoid it. Hatred towards women is not the solution for you know remaining brahmachari. <laughs> because that'll turn into attraction after some time. <laughs> so, therefore, the only way is to make progress in Krishna consciousness. We become attracted to Krishna, we become attracted to the process of devotional service, we just don't have any time for these other things, that's all. But this hard-heartedness doesn't you know, it's it's contrary to devotional because Krishna likes to steal butter. He's a butter thief. And if you keep butter in the refrigerator, it gets hard, and you, and you try to spread it on your bread. What happens? It breaks the bread, right? So butter, butter needs to be soft or soft enough to spread. 
So Krishna will steal your heart when it's soft, <laughs> not hard. <laughs> Cold and hard. Has to be warm and soft. <laughs> but <laughs> therefore one has to be careful not to use their intelligence, not to divert one's emotions in the wrong direction. One has to keep that emotional energy directed towards Krishna and be kind to all living entities. Hmm. Hmm. Sometimes devotees are afraid to be kind to women because they think, oh, I might get trapped, <laughs> or it's not good, like that. But kindness is the first principle, but kindness has to be done in a way that it is not sensual. <laughs> and not everyone can do that. So if you can't do that, best just to remain outside of that association. Mm -hmm. So what would be difference between kindness and uh, to have opportunity to be in subtle sex? Uh, it is, is very difficult to have vision of that, I think. To be an opportunity to have what? Subtle sex with another, another gender, oh, so with association, I mean. Yeah. Well, and to be kind, I mean, it is very difficult to, to yeah. have vision of that. Yeah, what is the difference? Well, if you're not married, it's not necessary to associate with women. Of course, we find that, uh, that in Krishna conscious society, because the interaction is there for service, the service should be done, should be focused on it. We used to discuss this a lot when I was in the Brahmachari Ashram. It was every day we would talk about this because it was a big, big thing. So sometimes devotees would say, well, no more than five minutes with a woman for the sake of carrying on your service. <laughs> and someone would say, that would be too long. So they would try to make all these different, you know, uh, measures to somehow or other. <clears throat> But better to uh, better to develop a association with, you know, your peer group like that. So if you're in a situation to show kindness, you can do that. But you, it's not like you have to run around looking to, to show kindness to women and think, I'm being very kind to the ladies. <laughs> That might get you trapped. <laughs> and soon as the mind is changed, then that's the beginning of the subtle fall down. Just like some devotees think, well, I'm not falling down, but what's happening in your mind? <laughs> so that's the beginning. It starts in the mind, and then from there it goes to the senses, and then the senses become strong in that direction. <laughs> So just be respectful to all living entities, including everyone, not only of the opposite sex, but all living entities, even those in less than human bodies. We, we, we uh, don't infringe on anyone in the wrong way. Devotee's kind to all living entities. But devotee will not even kill an ant, Prabhupada said, what to speak of being unkind to others. So that takes practice, but the solution is make advancement in Krishna consciousness. As you make advancement, you're fixed in the chanting of the holy names of the Lord and you're not disturbed. You can understand that this uh, attraction for man and woman is simply what it is. It's just attraction. It doesn't lead to anything positive. There's no, there's no happiness there. It looks good. <laughs> it's like a flashing, you see a nice flashing light, but all it is is different color bulbs flashing and it has a different image that it's flashing. The image is not there, it's just bulbs flashing. <laughs> That's all. So this is Mamaya flashes. Come here and enjoy. So if you're attracted to that, then but then again, never take a chance thinking, I'm like Lord Shiva. 
I'm not going to get attracted. <laughs> That's dangerous. So I'm um, just like we mentioned, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. Now, who he's a great soul. He's a Mahapurush. So he was with his disciples, and no, he was with yeah, he was with his disciples, and one of his disciples had his daughter with him. She was a young girl, and at one point, she said to to Bhakti Siddhanta, uh, Guru Maharaj, I would like to speak with you. He said, fine, yes, you can speak, yes, what is it? She said, no, I want to speak in private. He said, I can't do that. If you want to say something, you can speak here. <laughs> so Prabhupada points that out. I mean, he was his like grandfather to this girl, but still, he was very, he observed the etiquette like that. That's why the Shastras say, never be alone with your mother, your sister, or your daughter. It says that in the Shastra. Man is like butter, and woman is like fire. <laughs> and when they get together, there's melting like that. So don't melt. <laughs> so, um, this is not a con condemnation of the opposite sex. We just have to understand that there is facility for association, and that is grihasta life. But even in grihasta life, one should follow the etiquette and not think, now I can enjoy as much as I want, and let me, I have a wife, and you know, so let me, let me you know, 24-7. But you know that's another form. That's 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 a fall down also. So one has to follow the etiquette. Where's Shasho? He's asking about etiquette. He left. In grihasta life, there is ways to associate even in grihasta life, what to speak about in general. Because we are we don't belong to this material world. We belong with Krishna in the spiritual world. And so everything in this material world is designed to entrap us more and more into the desire to enjoy here. And the attraction between the opposite sex is the most powerful form of attraction. And nobody can conquer over it unless they're fully Krishna conscious. There's no way. <laughs> That's the only way you can do it. Because you might think, I'm fixed. The next minute, then somebody's going to have to fix you. <laughs> I've seen it. As soon as you think you're okay, then you're KO. Instead of okay, you're K knocked out. And KO is knocked out. Instead of okay. <laughs> so, sometimes, you know, you think, well, there's no girl in it that can attract me. But then there's that one you haven't seen yet. <laughs> and then she'll come along and all of a sudden, wow, life has, be has real meaning now. <laughs> so yeah. And this happens on the both sides and even for the ladies. But Prabhupada said all the men should remain brahmachari and all the women should get married. <laughs> and then he turned to the leaders and said, you guys try to figure that out, how to do that. <laughs> Why did Prabhupada say that? Because men do better in Krishna consciousness when they're not married, and women do better in Krishna consciousness when they're married. That's why Prabhupada said that. That's the fact. Uh, because generally, usually it, sometimes we see a well, man will get married and his Krishna consciousness will increase. But that takes time. It doesn't happen right after the marriage. <laughs> it takes time. But don't give up. You can become Krishna conscious in any ashram if you, if you follow the instructions. And... In Grihasta Ashram, there's four things you should do. One, you should read Krishna book together with your wife.
Two, you should take prasadam together. Three, you should worship the, the home deity together, because every grihastha must have the home deity. And four, you should chant the Hare Krishna Maha mantras together. Or with other devotees like that. Prabhupada writes that in Bhagavad Gita. So he said these are the activities of grihastas like that. So if you keep your activities in association with the spiritual energy in your grihastha ashram, then one can make nice progress in devotional service like that. Okay, Sri Devi, you have a question? Uh, thank you for this class, Guru Maharaj. You were speaking on the subject of women preachers and that we, we, we need to have more women preachers and there's many a lack. More, many more. Men preachers too, but especially women preachers. Yeah. So this came up in a discussion. One of the people I know who's a temple leader in one sense in San Antonio, he mentioned that women preachers... Um, you know, how is that going to work? Because you're sitting there on the Vyasasan and you're talking Shastra and when men ask questions, you're answering and now it's... What's wrong with that? If they know the Shastras, they can do that. Oh, you're instructing the men. How can you do that? Well, if you got to preach, you got to instruct. <laughs> But his take was, this is reverse. The men should be teaching the women, not women teaching the men. He doesn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> the women are always teaching the men. All, <laughs> all the time. The men can't see that, but it's happening. <laughs> There's an old saying that a man will chase a woman until she catches him. <laughs> no, that's the, that's the, that's the truth. So yeah, it's it's like that. Just like <clears throat> I had a god sister who was really advanced. I mean, she used to give classes, worship the deities. So one time she was asked to give the Srimad Bhagavatam class. So she sat up on the Vyasa sun. And uh, there was two brahmacharis sitting in the first row. And one brahmachari said to the other brahmachari, a woman is giving class like he was frightened, you know. And she heard it. She, could, she actually heard him say that. So she looked at them and said, please don't put me on the bodily platform. <laughs> they were on the bodily platform. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. So we have to somehow or other make advancement in Krishna Khan. Part of that is get off the bodily platform. And that we act on religious principles like that. But there is an etiquette, and we follow that etiquette. And, but we keep religious principles foremost. Like that. So, yeah, women can give... You gave class in Mayapur, right? And you got some questions from some of the men too, right? Very challenging ones too. Yeah, they'll usually challenge you. That's the ones. So yeah, it's like that. But that's okay. That's good for you. It helps you to go deeper into the philosophy. It's good. It's good to get challenged once in a while. Nobody challenges here. It's good to challenge. Hey, Maharaj, you think you know everything. What? Here, here. Try this one. <laughs> I'm waiting for that, but I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> If you go to America, that's all they do is challenge you all the time. <laughs> Sometimes you think, uh-oh, here it comes. I know that guy's going to challenge me. <laughs> but it's good because, you know, it should be, it's good to help that because it helps to understand deeper or, or understand things from a different angle of vision. It's important. Like that. Like that. But we have to discuss this subject matter. Pum Samstrina Bituni Bhava Metad has to be discussed. 
Otherwise, our movement will fall into uh, what we call it the secrecy of the mind. The mind has a tendency to be secret and it doesn't want to reveal what's going on. And sometimes we even deny that secrecy, thinking I'm okay. But therefore, it's important to have senior association and also discuss these, these topics that are a little bit hard to discuss, especially this particular topic. It needs to be discussed. Okay. So, we have another online. Here comes the challenging question. Okay, here it comes. <laughs> My desire was fulfilled. Online question was Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, when a devotee has a fall down, what does that say about how he or she practiced devotional service before? And uh, can you say such devotee was not really serious about? It? Not necessarily. It doesn't mean you, just because someone falls down, it doesn't mean they're not serious. But they just, they haven't practiced the process properly. Or they committed some offenses, which can lead to fall down, and not corrected those offenses. There's different. Right? If he's talking about fall down in the sense of attraction to the opposite sex, within the wrong ashram, just like sometimes brahmacharis, yeah, secretly get attracted to a particular. <laughs> I just remembered a story. Should I tell this story? <laughs> This is nice, it's not something. I know one lady, she's a devotee. She was a brahmachari in her last life. And she knows it, she, she has visions of her last life and she's written about it. Uh, and this brahmachari was attracted to an Indian lady. And then he, he had a car crash and he died in a car crash. And then he took birth as this Indian lady, who now is a devotee in our ISKCON movement. <laughs> and she's fixed. She doesn't want to have anything to do with any, any relationships. She's just, she does Sankirtan all the time. <laughs> but she was a brahmachari was in the last life. And this brahmachari had this attraction, ultimately. So, this is a, a, a living example of how the philosophy works. It's not like we just read about it and that's all. She remembers her past life and she's written about it and she's made it possible, she's made it known. I know her really good. She's a good friend of mine in the sense that she's, I always see her and she's out on Sankirtan all the time. But, you know, she's written about it, she's talked about it, she's even given a few classes about it, how in her last life she was a brahmachari. <laughs> and so, you know, that happens. <laughs> so, yeah. So consciousness propels one in a certain direction. So if you want to be successful, keep your consciousness on Krishna. Keep your consciousness on, if you can't keep your consciousness on Krishna, then do one thing. Always think of how to serve. That's the success. If you're always thinking how to serve, then from moment to moment you're in, you're in, in the spiritual energy. You're, you're safe, you're always thinking how to serve, what's my next service, what am I, how am I doing this service? And that way you stay somewhat freed from the effects of the external energy. You're always thinking how to serve. That's Krishna consciousness. Every moment, how to serve. What is my service now? Oh, can't think of anything. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. That's service. <laughs> Yeah. Anything else before we? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for your classes. Being attracted to good devotional qualities in others is not actually attraction to Krishna or it is. I mean, uh, is not Krishna is not Krishna we looking for in others, <laughs> like question. Is that, is that Maya following me, Ooh, telling me that? This is one of these tough questions. <laughs> well, sometimes you think, oh, that Mataji has such good qualities. But, oh. <laughs> and you, or that Prabhu has so many good qualities. And so attraction to the qualities is also attracting to the person because you can't separate the person from the qualities. Mm -hmm. But you can appreciate someone's qualities, but you shouldn't dwell on them, you know, like that. Yeah, especially if it's the opposite sex, then you're going to connect their qualities with the individual and then you, you become attracted to the individual because how do you get attracted to an individual by their qualities it's their qualities that attract you their character that attracts you so that's attraction to the person but if you're appreciating these qualities as being Krishna conscious qualities or good qualities that's good that's Krishna conscious so it's appreciation and not attraction. Does that help? And if you see, in any, any good quality that anyone has is a reflection of Krishna's qualities anyway. So when it manifests itself in a devotee, that means the devotee is making advancement. Because you make advancement by how much you develop Krishna conscious qualities. That's how you make advancement. If you're not developing the qualities that are conducive to spiritual life, then you, there's something to work on. Work on those qualities. Mm-hmm. I just think it's something funny. I'll tell you later. <laughs> I can't say it now. It's it's about you, so I can't say it. <laughs> Your wife knows. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> It's a good quality. It's one of the qualities of Krishna. <laughs> huh? Tell? You sure? No, you don't want me. No, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> uh, so, Guru Maharaj, this is a very sobering class and a little maybe, you know, unsettling because sometimes, as you say, you think, I'm fixed, I'm fixed, and next thing you know, whoa, boom. So I just want to know that, uh, you know, you had said also that Krishna's name, holy name, purifies you, protects you, and guides you. In but then again, your intelligence is there. Emotions have to be guided by intelligence. If you allow your emotions to go, and not guided by proper intelligence, they'll go wherever they want to go. Mm -hmm. So that's why sometimes we say people get married because women are generally more on the emotional level and men are more on the thinking level. Or, But when you combine them too, then you have the perfect situation because emotions have to be guided by intelligence and when intelligence guides emotions in the right way, that's Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. When emotions are not guided by proper intelligence, then it can wind up anywhere. <laughs> so Krishna's holy name will purify your intelligence and the Dhammi Buddhi Yogam Tam will right. give you good intelligence. Right, right, um, exactly, exactly, yeah. Okay. That's reassuring. Thank you. Hare Krishna. And read the books too. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. Because the intelligence is manifested in Shastra. It's also like that. 
And here, but what's really powerful is hearing the words of the pure devotees. Mm. Especially Srila Prabhupada. Particularly Srila Prabhupada. Okay, so we'll stop here. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.